So any object can become a curved brush in ZBrush. Um, here I have a star, which I'm going to convert into an insert mesh brush, which is the start point for creating a curved brush. So I'm going to, just going to go to brush, create, and say create insert mesh. It's going to ask, do I want to append it to the current brush or new? I'm going to say new. And we now have a new brush. You'll notice that the name polymesh 3 d which was here, whatever name I had written here, is what would be adopted in the actual name over here. So now that we have that, we're ready to start sculpting on something. Um, if we try and sculpt on our primitive, it's going to tell us that we can't do that. We can only use an insert mesh brush or a curved brush on a polymesh 3D. So I'm going to make this a polymesh 3D in order to be able to do that. Once I've done that, you'll see that it now just draws it out. It doesn't actually create curves from this, so we need to convert this into a curved brush. So to do that, we go to the stroke menu and underneath curve, we turn on curve mode. So as you can see, all that will do is actually create a curve for us um, and the size of the brush is going to determine how big the objects are on this. So if I make the brush an awful lot smaller and I click on it again, we're going to get small stars. If I make it bigger, we're going to get bigger stars. The amount that you get is purely determined by the size that you have here. To control this brush, you'll see that my brush size is red, but when I hover over it, it becomes blue. So when it becomes blue, that's basically saying that you can now modify the actual curve itself. So the size of the cursor is actually going to determine what is affected. If I make this really small, I'm going to be just affecting a very small area. If I make it really large, I'm going to be affecting a much larger area. So if I take the end of this with a large brush and move it, I'm going to take everything. If I make it really small, I have the option of actually making it curl a little bit more. But you can see that there's limited how much curl we can actually have on this. To change that, I can go to brush, I can go down to modifiers, and I can change the max bend angle. So if I increase this max, max bend, bend angle, we can now put a lot more curve on this than we could before because it's allowing it to bend up to 90 degrees, as you see here. I'll just undo that. If you want to extend the brush, you'll see that as you get closer to it, I'll zoom in a little bit, as you get closer to it, you'll see a red line extending from it. So uh, what I'm going to do just to accentuate that is to go to Stroke Menu, Curve Modifiers, and choose the Curve Snap Distance and increase that. Once I've done that, I no longer have to get quite so close to this for the red line to appear. But once that red line is on and the cursor is blue, then that means I basically if I continue to draw out the stroke, it's going to extend the stroke that we had out to uh, where I've drawn out to. So this is a great way to extend it, but this doesn't allow us to shorten a curve. We can remove a curve by holding down Alt and just clicking through it. Just anywhere, you don't have to have the red line, just Alt and then click through it, that will remove it. But we can't actually shorten that curve. So to do that, we go back to the Stroke menu and under Curve, we can turn on Elastic or Liquid. If we take Elastic first, Elastic will, we can just grab the end of the curve and it pulls out in a very angular way. So that creates very... Um, limited uh, uses for this whereas if we change it to the stroke liquid type and uh, this is a lot more fluid and allows us to do more with it we can also pull back on this making the curve smaller but it will actually distort the original shape so you have to be careful how much you use this you can take the middle of a curve and pull this out and this will add in extra detail along the middle of a curve so if you decide you want lots of extra stuff in the middle we can do that by just pulling this stuff out um, if you pull it back, you can shorten it again as well, so you can actually, it's a little bit more difficult to control though. All curves can be smoothed, so you can see that this curve has quite a sharp angle on it. We can go to the stroke and underneath the curve functions we can hit smooth. That will smooth out that curve, so the next time we click on it, it will update to the new smoother shape. Uh, the more times we click on this, the smoother it gets, and if you wanted something really smooth, you can use that. As you're hovering over a curve, if you decide you want to spin that curve or uh, twist that curve, you can make your cursor larger by pressing S and increasing the scale and then clicking on the curve, holding down control, and that will spin that then on an angle. So this is our, our long axis. This is very useful for belts and stuff like that where you have a flat surface that you want to just control that, that edge of the curve a little bit more. And then on curve, if we turn on as line, when we do that same thing, we hit, we click it and then hit control. Sorry, if we turn on as line, we turn off bend. Then when you click it and you hit control, 
it'll it'll snap the whole thing now you'll see that it's actually snapping it'll twist the whole thing but you'll see it's actually snapping an awful lot so to fix that just turn off snapping and always turn off snapping actually when you're using the twist and you'll find you'll get a better result so this does the whole thing and if i undo that and i just turn off as line and leave bend on instead this you'll see will also work better with snap turned off when we turn snapping on you get unpredictable results so just be sure to turn that off when you're doing when you're using the twist functionality with control uh, if you want to create a loop around an object simply hold, uh, click go out into the canvas somewhere hold down shift and that will create a loop so when you let go that loop will go around the entire object so this is useful for when you're on a character and you want to do a belt so I'm going to take a an IMM belt brush here which I one which I've loaded earlier on which is IMM straps which somebody kindly put up onto the internet I can't remember the name of who and um, but you can find this easily enough by just searching for IMM straps so with this um, the one thing that is important to remember is that the geometry cannot have subdivisions if we had divided this character and then tried to draw this out it's going to say that we can't do that so make sure you have no subdivisions a dynamesh uh, object or a dynamically subdivided object will do fine so I'm just going to draw out that curve I have snap turned on so it's conforming to the surface but I also have liquid turned on so I'm going to turn that off if I have liquid turned on and I try and go around the surface here by grabbing the end just this last point you'll see as I get around to certain size certain angles I try and grab that because it's trying to conform to the surface so much it's actually quite difficult to control so a much better solution for this is to turn liquid off while you're coming around a corner like this or around a body zoom in close enough to be able to get that red line up to appear and draw it out yourself snap is still on so it's going to still snap to the surface but it, it seems to do a much better job um, when we're just doing it uh, by extending it this way so I'm going to bring it up like that and now now that I've brought it up and I, I do want to shorten this I'm going to go to stroke and I'm going to turn on liquid just to shorten the length of this a little bit uh, I'm going to try that one more time and this time with a larger brush and sometimes if this is still happening uh, you're better off turning off snap while you're doing this just to try and shorten this brush a little bit knowing that we can always just push it out after the fact it maintains the last location of the of the other piece so that's fine and um, I could pull this out from the side or I could just use a move brush after this has been done but I'll, I'll pull it out for the moment just to see and if at this stage something wasn't quite working out for you you'd literally click it here hold down control and then twist that area depending on the size of of your blue cursor so that's how to draw a belt draw a belt out and um, you can modify the curve you can smooth the curve as I said if you do smooth the curve using the curve functions here smooth it a couple of times you probably get a slightly more relaxed look that which, which may work for the curve but will probably go inside your model so you may have to push it back out again so just tap anywhere on your model to get rid of your curve and then choose your next brush so if you have something like this and you want to put the next part on you can just drag that out and then move this as I said you have the option to move it as a line where we can turn on line turn off bend turn off liquid and basically just move this entire object Contr clicking and control will allow you to spin it uh, and once you're happy with the general location of it something like that I'm going to spin that one more time by just holding down control click first and then hold control I'm just going to tap somewhere on my object this is masked so I can now place this as I see fit on three when you're placing something like this holding down alt and just tapping on your object will set your pivot point so now I'm going to be pivoting from this point so and we can hold down alt to just move the pivot point to the center so it pivots from the center so we can just push this bit down um, or rotate it around these all have separate polygroups so um, if I want to select the first strap all I have to do is hold down control while I'm in move mode and tap on that to isolate that or to mask out um, the, the little extra strap in here 
So once I have this, we can just alt tap on other pieces, change back to a move tool, move them into place. And set this the final part of our strap. You can alt tap on any given strap to come back to it. Make sure you have no mask turned on and just use your move brush. If you're doing this and you're moving the strap and your body underneath because there's still one object, you have two options. Either separate this out by going to sub tool and split. Sub tool and group split. That will split them into separate objects or change to a move topological. So B, M, T. And that, that way it will just move the area that you select, not the body underneath. So if you want to get that little a little bit closer to his body, you can do that too. Be careful to not be selecting his body though. <laughs> um, I'll pull this stuff out. And also because these are separate uh, pieces of topology, you'll be moving this out rather than the brush. So in this instance, to perfectly honest, you'd be better off doing a group split, which will create new polygroups for this. So now we can select this and not have to worry about the move topological. We could just use the normal move BMV, which will move them all out together. So hope this helps on making straps and uh, obviously you can go in now and start creating stitching and extra details and leather texture and all that kind of stuff on the actual strap itself. All right. Thanks. Bye.